I would just like to read a text which is well known to all of us. And it says in Psalm, um, Psalm 139, it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And of course, when we look at this text, it speaks of the care and attention which God has made us. Even although sometimes we have challenges with our hormones and so on, but God, each of us is individually handcrafted and there is something fearful about how we have been made. So just remember, whenever you want to doubt yourself, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Remember that. Before we, uh, I introduce our presenter to you, I'd like you to bow your heads as we close, as we pray. Let us close our eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity that you have afforded us to come together on this platform to be able to learn more about <clears throat> the way our bodies work and how we can make things better. And so, Father, we invite your presence. Wherever we find ourselves in our different homes, I pray, Father, that we may receive the blessing that is being prepared for us. I pray for our speaker, Mary Ann, in a particular way, that you may be with her as she presents. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for her willingness to always come and serve us at the Cape Conference and in the Northern Conference. And so, Father, I pray for that you may even enlarge her territory, that you may bless her, that you may protect her from all evil as well. And so, Father, now as we continue, we pray, Lord, for your blessing. We pray this, Father, in your name. Amen. Well, as I'd like to welcome you once again, this is our first meeting for this year. And as you know, it's done on a monthly basis. So um, every month we have a different topic. And of course, we also do it with children's ministries as well. So before we even I introduce you, I'm going to ask everybody to kindly mute. It's very disturbing when we hear conversations from your household, etc. So please always check your phone to see that you are muted. And thank you so much once again for joining us. We really look forward to this presentation. It's a very important topic. So thank you for coming along and um, just spending this hour with us. Our presenter today, as you've seen the posters, is a Mary Ann Shearer. She's no stranger to us because I looked at the program last year. This time she did our presentation as well. But for those of you that don't know Mary Ann, she holds a doctorate in life science and is the director of, of the Natural Health Academy. She's the founder director of the Daniel Academy. And of course, she's also the owner and director of a restaurant in Somerset West, Cape Town. And I can tell you, if you want to have a good vegan meal, I'm advertising for her now, but please forgive me. Go to her restaurant. She has the most amazing meals prepared. And of course, there's a number of products as well. So Mary Ann, thank you so much once again for just being with us and for taking the time to come and speak to us. And I know we always come to you and you never hesitate to say no problem. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And I'm going to give the time over to you now. Thank you. Uh, great to spend time with you ladies and always an honor and a privilege to be with God's people anywhere in the world. It really, really is. Um, and I love the scripture about us being fearfully and wonderfully made. It is, if people really got that, they would understand stewardship of the body. I mean, if you really, really understood that God has made you fearfully and wonderfully, you would, we would be so much more careful about what we put inside our bodies. And, uh, and so I'm going to share with you today, really, as much as I can in the, in the time we've got, and hopefully help you with uh, help with your hormonal system. And I don't think many people realize how incredibly well designed this hormonal system is. The real name for the hormonal system is the endocrine system. And the endocrine system does so much more than controlling just your hormones. It controls hormones are a big thing. And hormones are just simply 
chemicals that are used to transport messages all over the body and make chemical reactions take place in the body. So when those chemicals are not working properly or they're not being produced in enough quantities and they can't get to where they need to go because you know, we're not putting the right things into our body, then we end up with a chemical imbalance of these hormonal substances that are all over the body. And hormones are not just estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. You've got things like cortisol, and you've got things like insulin that regulate blood sugar. Cortisol is what helps us with stress. But there are at least two dozen, at least 24, odd, sometimes some people say more, hormones that the body makes to regulate everything in your body. And it regulates your hormonal or your endocrine system, regulates blood pressure, blood sugar, body weight, muscle strength, energy, sleep, growth, weight, bowel movements, bladder function, lung function, liver function, kidney function, heart function, your immune system function. In fact, your endocrine system controls all the systems in your body. Your brain and central nervous system are connected directly in the brain to the endocrine system. So you've got the hypothalamus gland, which is the the, the managing director or CEO of the central nervous system, and it's connected to the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland is the CEO or managing director of the entire endocrine system. So it's really, really important that we actually understand. So anything that stresses us out, anything that affects our central nervous system, whether it be our habits or food we eat, is going to affect your hormone system or your endocrine system. And people don't really understand that until they hear what I'm saying is that anything that affects your central nervous system, chronic stress, for example, and chronic stress can be things like um, you, you're working in a job that you absolutely hate or you feel completely overused and abused in either in your work or in a relationship or in your family, whatever it is, is this day in and day out. It could be little bits of stress day in and day out that you're not processing. And I think we all know that one of the best ways to handle our stress is to get down on our knees and hand over to God, let go and let God. It sounds so um, like, you know, people just say, let go, let God. And it's like, they don't get it. But the reality of it is you have to actually let go and let God because there's certain things you can control. Three things you can control. What you put into your mouth, whether or not you exercise and whether you choose to follow your maker or not. And as part of that is your attitude. So your spiritual well-being and your attitude, are those are things that we control. Everything else you can't. We can't control the weather. The weather's doing some amazing things today. It looks like winter's trying to get here. <laughs> but a little bit of rain is better than no rain at all, always in the Western Cape at this time of the year. So the weather we can't control. We can't control our government. We can vote, but it doesn't mean we control anything. We can't control what other people say and do, but we can control what we say and do. We can't control what other people eat, but we can control what we eat. And I think it's really, really important that we realize that stewardship is something that we have in our hands. God has given us the ability to really look after our bodies, and it's our choice. You know, I've had so many people say to me over the years, I can't eat healthy or get healthy because um, – um, I've got a family of six. And then somebody else says, I can't eat healthy because I live on my own and I've got nobody to do this with. So so we can wake up every morning and have excuses. It doesn't matter what they are. You could say, I don't have any money. I know when I started changing the diet that we had, my husband and I were stony broke with three kids. Well, the third one was on the way. And we just, you know, my husband just lost his business. We lost our home. And we were starting from scratch. And we didn't come from families that just had money that they could just help us out. We were self-made people in a sense. We were we had to really work very hard. And uh, and whatever we did in our studies, we paid for ourselves. And and it was and it was hard work, but it's been worth it. But at the time we had absolutely no money. So I remember, um, and I wasn't eating a completely plant-based diet at the time, but I remember that we would buy a chicken which would last us an entire week. So we would roast it on a Sunday. On a Monday, I would make chicken a la king from this leftover flesh. And then Tuesday, I'd make like something else, like a risotto, kind of a rice and veggie mix with it. And then on Wednesday, I would use, in those days I ate chicken livers, uh, I, I'd use the stuffing. I'd made stuffing for the chicken with the chicken livers and bread, crumbs and herbs. And then like, you know, Thursday, it was something, and then, and then it would be soup for a couple of days and then Sunday would come again. So we had one chicken shared amongst five of us and that's how it lasted. And we, I only bought 
put vegetables that were the cheapest and any fruit that was the cheapest in season. And I learned then that, in fact, when we buy fruit and vegetables that are in season, they taste nicer and they're way more nutritious. The, the sign of how nutritious your food is, is that it's sweet. So it doesn't matter if it's organically grown or not organically grown. Is, is it sweet? Is the tomato have a sweetish aftertaste? Even potatoes can have that lovely kind of rounded taste to it. But you can sometimes eat carrots that are bitter and other times eat carrots that are sweet. And that all goes to indicate how much nutrition is in your food. So you'll find when you're eating in season and you're eating what's available, you don't have to buy the most expensive thing. You don't need superfoods at all. We really just need to actually eat what God has made for us in that season, on that day, basically. So we, 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 I could have had any excuse under the sun, and we had a whole lot of health issues. My husband had high blood pressure from the age of 19, and he wasn't even overweight. Blood pressure was 160 over 110. I had very heavy menstrual periods that used to bleed for seven days, and I felt as if I was miscarrying every month. It was just big clots of dark, dark red didn't smell good. I felt like I was dying. And people used to say this, you know, this is the curse that God's put on to suffer. That's what I was taught as a kid. Well, here's the interesting thing. When I started eating God's way, it went to two light days, fresh, fresh blood, no smell, no clots, nothing, no pain. Nothing. There's one girl from Canada, Monique. She She's in one of our Zoom classes that we do. And she said, I felt like somebody was trying to kill me every month I menstruated. She says it was like somebody stuck two knives into my groin, was twisting it, and they were trying to kill me. And I would roll around in pain. And she said, since I've been following these principles, my periods are light. Nobody's trying to kill me anymore, and it's not a curse. And I know exactly what she's saying because it was like that when I was in my late 20s when we changed our diet. And so the things that improved for me was things like my menstrual period just regulated beautifully, all the cellulite I had on my legs that I didn't know how they got, how I got, they just disappeared. Cellulite is a hormonal thing. Um, my husband's blood pressure just stabilized beautifully. Blood pressure is stabilized by the hormonal system. Um, I used to have terrible mood swings with my blood sugar just shooting up and then overreacting and coming down too low. And when it was down too low, I'd be suicidal and have suicidal ideation. In fact, they diagnosed me as being bipolar because my mood swings would go in tune with my blood sugar. And, uh, and so I had that issue, which some days I'd be trashing the house and breaking all the plates. And my poor husband was like, well, I suppose this is what they call premenstrual tension, but it used to last for most of the month. And I said to him one day, why did you put up with it? And he said, you know, when you were, the good times made up for the bad times. When you were good and okay, you were really nice. And that's what I kept in my mind. I said, well, God must have given you unbelievable grace and me incredible favor with you. Because if I said to him, if you'd behave half as badly as I used to behave, I would have run away. I would have moved out, taken the kids and disappeared. And he didn't. He hung in there and God gave him an incredible supernatural love. And we've been married for 47 years now. We got married on the 1st of January, 1977. I was nearly 19 years old. And just in case you think, I was not pregnant. We were in love and we didn't have, we ourselves didn't have homes. We were, there was no space in our parents' homes, which were tiny apartments for us to live. And we thought, well, let's get married. And we did. So and you didn't hear that? We've been married for 47 years. We've got three daughters that are all grown up and uh, five grandchildren. The oldest one is 20, 23 this year. The youngest is turning 14 this year. And we have a great granddaughter who is all of one year old on Saturday. She just turned one. So we are. I'm so grateful that God showed us a way for us to get healthy and gave me an incredible husband that just hung in there. Um, it's difficult to hang in. I mean, it was a long time. It took me a good three to four years to start making some changes in my diet when I realized that my incredible mood swings were related to the fact that I consumed refined sugar and my brain does not like refined sugar and I loved it. I could eat uh, Cook Sisters and custard slices all day long and skip everything else. And instead I said when I learned, I read an amazing book called Sugar Blues, it's out of print now. You might be able to get it. This is it over here. Sugar Blues. I found like every every time I find a copy in a bookshop, I just buy it because I know there's always somebody's going to need it. One day I want to make a movie on that movie. It's an unbelievable story of the history of sugar and how it got to where it is today is unbelievable. And the world needs to know that. And I read this book and I was like, okay, Lord, I, I 
forget this sugar thing. But what am I going to eat? And and God's never spoken to me audibly, but I very definitely heard in my heart and in my spirit, what would you eat if you were in the Garden of Eden? And I was like, okay, that's easy. I'd climb the date tree and eat all the dates because they'd be sticky and sweet. And I like sticky sweet things. So I've got dates and raisins and and I love mangoes and watermelon I love. And I started thinking of all, and I started eating that. I started eating fresh fruit and dried fruit with no preservatives on it. And the most amazing thing happened. My blood sugar started stabilizing. I started behaving like a normal person. My menstrual periods started to regulate themselves. And it was the most amazing journey that we've been on as a family. And Mark and I have not had a medical bill due to ill health Oh, gosh, since we were, I'm trying to think, it's about 35, 40 years now. It's, it's yeah, it's a long time that we haven't had a medical bill. And when I been for a medical, like I had to go and have a complete medical, when our dentist moved away and had to go to a new dentist, you've got to go full medical. You're in your 60s, I've got to, I've got to know if there's anything. Are you on medication? No. Are you on medication? No. Are you on sleeping tablets? No. Are you on antidepressants? No. Are you on anti-anxiety? No. I said, I'm not on medication. Yeah, but most people don't realize. Do you take Panada? I said, no, I don't. I have not put any medication in my body. And this is how incredibly well God has designed our, our, our bodies. Anyway, went for the medical and the guy said, I haven't met a woman. I said the same thing to my husband in your physical condition ever in my life. Never, ever seen it. And the dentist was blown away. But this is how God intended us to live. He intended us to live medicine-free. He really did. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I, I just didn't want to go on to lithium for bipolar disorder because it, one of the side effects is it made me fat. And I came from a fat family. I mean, spending my whole life trying not to put on weight by going on crazy diets. And now I must take medication that makes me put on weight. I wasn't concerned about liver damage or lung damage or enlarged hearts or anything. I just did not want to put on weight. You know, my husband didn't want to go on blood pressure medication because when the doctor, I said to him, ask the doctor what the side effects are. And he went through this long list like diabetes and the whole long of it's very known, a, a common side effect of blood pressure medication is diabetes, type 2 diabetes. He wasn't worried about that at all wasn't worried about any of the symptoms except when it came to erectile dysfunction. He said, thank you. I'd rather die of a heart attack. Thank you very much. And he left. He came home and he said to me, okay, I'm now ready to eat anything you tell me to eat. I'm ready. And so he changed a bit later. He was always like, well, I don't really have health problems like you had health problems. I don't have menstrual periods. There's nothing really wrong with me. I've got this blood pressure issue, but, you know, I'm kind of okay. And very often when men, it becomes personal with them, they suddenly like, I'll do anything. And, and he did. My husband helped to open the first Kentucky Fried Chicken in this country. It was in Krugersdorp in the 1970s. I think it was somewhere around 1974, 75. And he, didn't, he thought chickens were vegetables. He liked steaks and burgers. And so he lived on an enormous amount of animal products, way more than I did. I loved animal products, but I didn't like to touch them and cook them because it felt too much. Chicken looked like a baby's torso, you know, with the head and the legs and the arms chopped off. And I would get my husband to come and chop the chicken up for me because, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. In those days, they used to cut the chicken into the pieces. Anyway, so we've been completely plant-based for, gosh, at least 30, 35 years, at least 35 years. Before that, actually, yeah. My oldest daughter, it's her birthday, today, my youngest daughter's birthday. She is 38 today. And we've been plant-based since she was born. So it's 38 years, basically. And she's my tallest, strongest daughter as well. She's six foot tall. She's got incredible muscles and not an ounce of fat anywhere on her. And so we found that, that the more plant food we've eaten, the more energy we have, the better our hormonal systems work. Everything just works better all the time. And my husband will be 70 this year in May, and I'm about to turn 66 uh, in, a 40, in two days' time, uh, 14 days' time, 15 days' time, basically. And, and so for me to be in a place where I have no aches and pains, I have boundless energy, I will do between 16,000 and 22 or 25,000 steps a day. I am busy. I run a school involved in the restaurant. Um, I walk with my husband on the beach. We we are busy, 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 busy all the time. My mind is crystal crystal clear. Not because I'm amazing, because God's amazing. He designed this incredible, incredible body that just it just corrects itself and repairs itself if you create the right environment. And that's what I'm talking about. It's up to you. 
Nobody's going to come and wave a wand on you. You can pray all day long. Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me. This is what God's trying to do tonight, is to tell you that you have to heal yourself in a sense. You've got to make the decision to follow a healthy lifestyle, change the way you're living, and then your body that he gave you, this one that we, we fearfully and wonderfully made, will now start to repair itself. Now, now, can everything repair? Everything that's not irreparable. In other words, if you chop your finger off, it's not going to regrow, okay? But I have seen all kinds of problems. I've seen epilepsy go. I've seen people's heart disease clear up completely, including my own brother who had a heart attack 13 years ago. And, and he was super fit. He's always been super fit. And they said his heart was actually really strong. It's the only reason he survived because the condition he had is called the widow maker. Nobody survives it. He did. But he came out of the hospital. I went and fetched him because his wife had to fly back to Johannesburg. And he said to me, I'll eat anything you tell me to eat. And he went completely plant-based from there basically off all his medication and he's they basically told him his memory would be gone forever because he just couldn't remember anything my brother's brain function is it was before i think he's at about 85 90 percent of his brain function and before that he's one of these people that's like a genius and can do anything he puts his mind to so he's still smarter than most other people and but for the first couple of years it was touch and go he just was like a he's an accountant he couldn't remember numbers he'd look at a spreadsheet and not know what he was looking at now he does know so it's amazing even things where they told him your brain's not going to heal god gave him this incredible body and it started to heal itself and it's a miracle to see how his brain's working he runs, takes people up to 13 peaks on Table Mountain, goes to Namibia and takes people on hikes, and he's physically really super fit. But in the process, his body has healed itself. I've seen people with cancer, their bodies repair and heal themselves. And I'm not saying you must just say, well, I'm not going to take any medication. That's, that's, that's being foolish. You need to say, what does my body want and how can it heal itself? And you create the right environment. And basically what I'm going to share with you tonight what affects your hormonal system is going to help because your hormonal system is involved in anything. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. Something like cancer is controlled by the, regulated by the immune system. But behind that is the endocrine system, this hormonal system that controls everything. So very important that you actually understand that your body is fearfully and wonderfully made. And God did knit you together in your mother's womb. He said, one pearl, two plain, blue eyes, brown eyes. And he knit all those colors together in there. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. And this body is so fearfully and wonderfully made, it can reproduce itself. I'm always amazed at how well people treat, treat their vehicles. They go and buy a flashy car. You might just buy a VW or a Maserati or a Rolls Royce. It doesn't matter what it is, but they'll be so careful about what they put in that car. And nobody must touch their car. And they don't want to park. My husband like, never wants to park where all the other people park in the parking lot at the mall. He'll go right to the far corner. And we don't mind the walk. We physically fit and we can, you know, I'm fit, fitter than most 20-year-olds that I know. And so we'll walk. But he does because he doesn't want anybody to bang his car. Now, he looks after his body, but other people do that. And they, they really nurture this car. And they just, it's so amazing. And I'm always amazed that people... When I meet people that say, oh, there's no such thing as a creator. We've evolved. Everything's about evolution. We've evolved from dust. I'm like, yeah, right. So how does a car evolve? What was it before it was a car? A rock? It's just this rock in the desert. And one day somebody stumbled over it and said, whoa, I'm going to call this a Maserati. Oh, no, there was a designer. And the designer designed it. And then the manufacturer made it, created it. And then people came and drove it. And that incredibly designed car can't reproduce itself. It can't fix itself. It can't make more cars. Well, what about our bodies? We can reproduce ourselves. Our body can repair itself. And we know that. You get a paper cut. It's irritating. You put a plaster or a Band-Aid on it for a couple of days. And then you take it off. And you're like, whoa, my finger fixed itself. You didn't have to stand there and lay hands on it and say, Lord, please heal my finger. Lord, I'm begging you heal my finger. He'll look at you and say, but I've already put the healing power in your body, not just to heal your finger, but to get rid of the tonsillitis, to get rid of the heavy menstrual bleeding, to sort out your menopausal issues. It doesn't matter whether it's menopause, premenstrual, fertility. I've seen people 
a woman at 40 having her baby for the first time couldn't fall pregnant. She actually named the baby after me. I didn't ask her to do that. But it was the most amazing thing to actually see how people's bodies heal themselves. When even sometimes I've thought, Lord, I know you've designed an incredible body, but this body has been damaged for so long. I've met people that have been on six doses of antibiotics every single year for like 25 years, and their immune system's just not functioning. And then they start treat it the way, treating it the way that God designed it to be treated, and it just starts to repair itself. It's the most incredible thing. The more you study the human body, and I'm of the opinion that every single child in every school all over the world should be studying the details of the human body. Because if you understand how your body works and you understand how to look after it, you're going to be a good steward of everything else too. And you'll live in awe of this incredible maker. Because the more you study it, the more blown away you are. You've got, you've got an organ. Everybody knows the liver. And they all think, oh, you had some glass of wine, so your liver's going to suffer. Your liver's not there just to kind of deal with some toxic substances. There's over 500 different functions in your body. 500. It's mind-blowing. And your liver function is controlled by the endocrine or the hormonal system. But I run through the endocrine system and the hormonal system, what the different organs are, and then I'm going to the different glands are, and then I'm going to tell you which things will help your hormonal system and which things will hinder them. So starting at first, you've got the pituitary gland that's in your brain. It's not kind of here, but it's in the middle of the brain. It's the size of a pea. It's tiny, and it's the CEO of the whole hormonal system, the whole endocrine system. And it regulates everything, but it's specific about things like pregnancy and breastfeeding, and but it controls everything else. And then you get the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. Your thyroid controls your metabolism, your appetite, the rate at which food travels through your digestive tract, it controls the rate at which um, your, met your metabolism burns, it controls your muscle tone. So if you're doing exercise all day long and you're not getting any muscles, then your endocrine system's not working properly. But if you're doing the exercise and you can see the muscles form, you know your endocrine system is working properly. So that's the thyroid gland. If the thyroid gland doesn't work properly, you could be very constipated or just mildly constipated. I didn't realize my thyroid gland was mildly constipated my entire life until I started doing things that would help my thyroid work even more efficiently. And then I was like, whoa, my mom used to send us to the bathroom with a book to read because we couldn't, things wouldn't happen. So in our bathroom, where the loo was, we always had a stack of books and we all used to sit there and read books. And I still have books in my bathroom just out of habit. You've got to have books in the bathroom in case you have to sit there a while. But I don't have, I kind of look at the books and I don't have time to read them because I'm not sitting there a while anymore. Everything just works. It's the most amazing thing. I didn't know that the sugar I was putting into my body and the gluten that I was putting into my body was affecting my thyroid gland and that was causing constipation, dry skin. I had terribly dry skin. Um, and then I get this brain fog where your brain just switches off sometimes and it's just like nothing's going on up there. You have these days where you feel, we walk around and you think, I'm jet lagged today. Just nothing switches on nicely. And that's typically the indication that the thyroid is not working as well as it should. Chronic stress can affect it. Lack of exercise can affect it. So if you're not exercising for a minimum of 20 minutes each day outdoors, and whether it's rain or wind or shine, Mark and I go outdoors. If we're either mowing the lawn, we're going for a walk, we are making biochar to put in our veggie garden, or we're digging a hole, or we having to saw down a broken tree. We are physically and actively doing things every single day to make sure, and at least 20 minutes outside, but we actually like doing about 45 minutes twice a day. We find we really feel fantastic. But 20 minutes a day is the least amount that you can do for your thyroid gland to start working properly. And that's part of your hormonal system. It also controls things like your calcium levels in your body. So if your thyroid gland is not working properly, then you could find that your bone, you're suffering from brittle bone disease or dental decay. So your teeth are weak and you're always using calcium or you're finding that you've got osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. The thyroid gland is so intricately involved in every function in the body. You can't really say, I've got a thyroid problem or I've got a pituitary gland problem or you move down and you go to the parietal cells in the stomach that secrete hydrochloric acid for your digestive tract to work properly. Some people, their digestive tract's not working properly. And that could be because those cells in the stomach that secrete hydrochloric acid are not doing their job. 
So it, it, it's not one specific. We, we're so focused on treating one thing. That's the one thing. You've got to step back and say, I need my endocrine system to work properly so that it all works together beautifully all the time, so that everything works together amazingly. And that's what you've got to do. Step back and say, what did God design? He didn't just make my thyroid. Or, well, I'm just going to go and have this removed or have that surgically removed. Stop and think about it first. Is there anything I can do to help my body repair itself? That's the number one thing you do. Then you pray and you ask God for wisdom. You can take what I give you tonight and run with it or not. It's entirely up to you. I can only tell you that for the last 35, 40 years that we've been doing this and I've been advising people with their, with their diets and writing books on stuff, I've seen miracles take place. People say, do you believe in miracles? I said, absolutely. And one of the biggest miracles in the world is the human body. It's wonderful when somebody says, this is never going to get well. We had a guy with cancer and he was like, that's it. You know, you've just, there's nothing you can do about this. Tumors in the, and the lungs and, and, and tumors in the liver and tumors in the abdominal tract, nothing. Changed his diet. 30 days later, he said to me, I'm just going to my doctor to take that tumor out of my abdomen. I just feel that's what I should be doing. In the hospital, the doctor said, I don't know what you've done or what's going on here, but this tumor is half the size of what it was. It was huge. And they took it out and they couldn't find any cancer in any other part. Nothing in the lungs, nothing in the liver, all gone. That's the miracle. And I'm not making this up. That doesn't happen with everybody. Some people it's three months, some people it's six months. And some people can change their diet and be in such intense fear all the time that they actually just get sicker and sicker from the chronic stress created from the fear they're in. So it's not just your food. It's your food and your lifestyle, including exercise. There are at least 12. I've got a program called 365 my year of wellness and in that we study the 12 different the most important systems in the body and how they work but in bite-sized pieces so you get a little bit of information every day with recipes and things and then you also study the 12 body systems one of the not body systems the 12 pillars of health so that would be one of them is your diet one is exercise spiritual well-being mental well-being social well-being relational financial finances affect your health if you're worrying about them it's going to affect your health and, of course, your health affects your finances. So you've got to get that in balance. Otherwise, you can end up spending all your money trying to be healthy when, in fact, all you need to do is step back and say, God, show me how I should be eating. And I want you to do that. You go home tonight. And even while you're sitting now, say, give me the wisdom to make the right choices. Give me the wisdom and the strength and the grace. And I say the grace because it's so easy to get healthy. And I know because I've been there, okay? You get healthy. And you like get a bit puffed up, you know, like I'm special, you know, God really loves me. And uh, and I really got this thing taped. And then you start judging people around you. And I'll tell you something now, when you start judging people around me, ask me, you're going to fall. Pride comes before fall. Absolutely. You're going to fall and you're going to get sick. And then you're going to be flat on your back and you say, okay, God, what am I doing wrong? And you'll start with pride's number one. That's number one. And then he'll help you with all the others. So ask God for the wisdom, the strength, and the grace so that you don't judge the people around you, okay? Right, so we start off, we've got that gland. Then we've got your, uh, from there you go to your pancreas. Your pancreas helps your, um, this pancreas and the adrenal glands, actually. These are the adrenal glands that sit on top of your um, uh, kidneys. They're tiny, they're the size of two almonds, and they sit on top of the kidneys and they regulate the stress hormones. So if it's chronic stress, these adrenal glands won't work properly. They also work very well together with the pancreas to regulate um, blood pressure, uh, a blood sugar at least, blood sugar. And they also, the adrenal glands control your blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is not working, the adrenal glands aren't working properly. And the things that the adrenal glands don't like at all is caffeine in any shape, size, or color. It can be coffee, tea, green tea, Chocolate, organic chocolate, organic cacao, raw cocoa beans. I don't care what it is. If it came from a coffee bean or a cacao bean or it came from, what's the other one that they have with this? Um, uh, Girana. Girana is, an, is another one that comes from another plant. Anything that's got caffeine in it, small, medium, in between, large, it doesn't matter. 
caffeine affects your entire endocrine system. And it will never work properly as long as you put in caffeine in. If you look at where caffeine comes from, it comes from South America, most of the things like the cocoa beans and the coffee beans. And they were used by the ancient Aztecs and Incas to chew them before they went to war because caffeine makes you really aggressive. It comes in and whips your adrenal glands and they start producing huge amounts of adrenaline and you're like, wow, man, I can just kill a hundred people. And you go out to war and you protect your family and you kill people and you and you don't sleep because you're so hyped up that you like got this almost unnatural strength and, and, and alertness. And that's what caffeine does to you. You're taking something every day, drinking tea or coffee or having your chocolate, just a little bit of something that's being used basically for people who normally would go to war. So you're putting yourself in an agitated state, in a slightly aggressive state, and some people get very aggressive when they have caffeine. In. So if you're wanting your body to heal itself, you've got to make sure caffeine is not going to help your hormonal system at all. It's going to make things worse for you. It's just going to make things tumble, and it's going to be the adrenal glands that go, the adrenal exhaustion, you're tired all the time, that you can't sleep at night, or you do sleep at night, and you wake up exhausted. If you recognize any of this, this is what caffeine does. You sleep, but you wake up exhausted, or you don't sleep, or you just find you anxious all the time. I grew up in a home, and we were healthy all the time, but my daughter got grew up, and she said, I don't have any health issues. I don't have to be as careful as my mom is. I'm going to have a cup of coffee or a little chocolate. And she had a little chocolate and a little cup of coffee and she had a little this and a little that and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then she was drinking an organic, organic energy drink. And she was still showing it to me. And I said to her, sweetheart, that's got caffeine in it. And she said, no, it doesn't affect me. And then on her own, she started seeing a doctor because she thought she had heart problems. And then this came out a couple of months later that her heart rate was up and her blood pressure had gone up and, and she was having these anxiety, time periods of anxiety. And I said to her, this is from caffeine. And she said, oh, don't be silly. Caffeine can't make me anxious like this. Terribly anxious. One day we get a phone call from a garage down on the highway down here. They say that, is this your daughter? And they mention her name. And my husband and I say, they said, we're at the garage. She's lying on her back here. We don't know whether it's a heart attack or what's going on, but she can't speak. And we hurtle down the highway. I mean, it took, that would normally take us 20 minutes. I think it took us 10 minutes. Lights flashing and everything else. And we pull in. Here she is lying flat on her back. She can't move. And her eyes have got this terrible look of desperation. Her mouth is trying to move. She's going, this like thing. Now, eyes are desperate. I can still remember the look in her eyes. And standing next to her is her cup of coffee. She's, she somehow, somebody put it down there. And everybody's saying, we don't know what's wrong with her. We found the ambulance. But just after we arrived there, and I said, this looks to me like a really bad panic attack. The ambulance arrives. The guy gets out. He takes her vital signs. He gets her into the ambulance. He says, this is a classic, really bad panic attack. She thought she was having a heart attack and she thought that I wasn't being very kind to her previously when I was saying this anxiety is from caffeine. Well, since that day, she hasn't consumed any caffeine. The, the ambulance driver all the way to the hospital was lecturing her about handling her stress and not having caffeine. And don't you know caffeine causes panic attacks? And she was, at that point, she was sort of starting to speak and relax, realizing part of it was realizing she wasn't having a heart attack. She was in such a state of fear because she thought this was it, she was dying now. And she was at the time, she's now 42, that was about four years ago. So she was in the late late 30s. So, so this is how things like caffeine can affect your body. You may be one of those people who says, I can drink six cups of coffee before bed and I sleep like a log. But are you tired when you wake up? Or are you just absolutely fine? Do you have any unexplained aggression sometimes? Are you irritable? Maybe you have headaches? Maybe your menstrual cycle is not what it should be. Maybe your blood pressure is not what it should be. Your blood sugar is not where it should be. Whether you're diabetic or got high blood pressure or got menstrual problems or menopausal problems or infertility problems, don't touch caffeine. I'm going to tell you, God always puts stuff into my mind. And I know there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. I was in the UK in London doing a talk to a group. It was a church that they'd asked me to come and speak. And one of the women, a young woman and her husband, right at the end came up to us and said, Marianne, We've bought your book. We've been following the program for the last six months to eight months. And 
we're doing everything perfectly, but we're really struggling to fall pregnant and we don't want to go the route of um, IVF, fertility treatment, because it has side effects. What else can we do? So I started asking them questions about what they were doing. Their diets were perfect. They were exercising, everything. I said, are you having anything with caffeine? In? And initially she said, her husband initially said no, and she went, I was about to say no, and she said, I had one very small cup of coffee. In the mornings, that's all. She said, that can't affect me. I said, look, the literature says that caffeine can cause infertility and sterility in some people, not in everybody. We all respond differently to different things based on our genetic makeup. I said, look, it's worth a try. Take it out and see what happens. I get an email six weeks later saying, incredible news. We've just found out we're pregnant, showing positive. And then a couple of weeks later, she said she's like, two months pregnant, and uh, there she went on to have two very healthy little boys. So just don't think that this is just something that a little bit of shock and a little bit of this is going to be okay. It's not meant to be in our bodies. If you're going to war, take caffeine to keep you awake and make you aggressive to protect yourself. That's what you use it for, not to just sit around drinking coffee and tea and whatever, eating some chocolates and thinking it's okay. And don't ever give caffeine to your children, ever, ever, ever. Rather than chocolate, use carob. Carob is the most amazing pot. It grows in Mediterranean countries. It's all over the trees where I live in the Western Cape. And uh, it just falls on the floor. So it's used for pig food in some countries. But in fact, you, it's ground. They ground the pot and you get this carob that comes. And it, we make an amazing drink called malted carob, which is like chocolate with no caffeine in it. And it's really nutritious. I mean, Carob has properties in it that actually help people that have got lung problems. It's known for settling diarrhea. It's known for helping your lungs function properly. It's the most amazing thing ever. And, and it's just incredibly, I mean, it's like, it's like this miracle food that's been sitting there and nobody's been doing anything with it for years. We make healthy chocolates out of it with nat more natural sugar that's stable in your blood sugar. And it's like the most incredible thing. So if you're wanting something like a chocolate, eat some carob or something like hot chocolate. You can get the carob powder or you can go you can go into Seattle and ask them for our malted carob drink. It's actually in the Seattle coffee shops if you want something to drink that's chocolatey. So there are things that you can, God has made the healthy versions of things that are actually, yes, so that's carob to everybody, C-A-R-O-B, carob. Interesting thing about carob, the little seeds are always used to weigh diamonds and gold. That's where the word carrot comes from, not from the carrot vegetable but from those carob seeds because they're so uniform and they always tend to weigh the same and be the same size just out of interest okay so we're talking about the hormonal system endocrine system so right we got down to the adrenal glands and we've got the pancreas and then you get the ovaries and the testes and the ovaries and the testes are what's involved in sexual function in reproduction and the pleasurable side of intimacy all of that is controlled so if you find a man or a husband or wife that has no libido and are not interested in intimacy, very often that's a serious hormonal system problem. I remember meeting us, speaking in Southern California some years back, and I got asked at the end of speaking at this one church, could I please come and speak? Could this couple come and see me privately? They had something to talk to me about their child. Turned out they had a special needs child, and they wanted to know what's the best way to feed him to help him. They may not recover, but at least to help him. So I said, okay, I'll help you with his diet. I mean, he's three or four years old. But I said, more importantly, we can't change the child's diet if, if I don't know what your diets are like. The diets were not too bad. They were just typical sort of American, more health conscious because they were in Southern California. They did exercise. But it turns out that both the youth pastor and his wife are taking medication for anxiety. So... I said, get out the medication. We take the insert out and we start re reading the side effects. And it says, there's a whole lot of side effects. One of them is anxiety. You can actually become more anxious. Check the side effects of any medication you're on and you'll know the truth. So they're reading the insert. And then it says, uh, no, lack of libido, no interest in, in intimacy. And they looked at each other and they looked at me and they said, we were actually thinking that we were going to get divorced because we have no desire for each other. We thought we'd just fallen out of love with each other. We didn't know that this is causing us. I said, well, are you consuming any coffee? And they said, yes, we have a Starbucks in our church. Go figure that one out. But most of the churches in the United States, most churches serve coffee and tea. They do. 
So here they were, drinking coffee, taking anxiety meds, falling out of love with each other and thinking of divorce. Can you imagine how good that looks when your assistant pastors, your youth pastors in a, in a church? And the little boy went on to recover. They got their relationship together just by getting rid of the caffeine. They didn't need the anxiety meds and they fell in love with each other again. So here's the issue. Eating properly can save your marriage. I know it saved mine because I was a crazy lady from hell literally in my husband's life. And now we're really happily married. Do we have arguments? Of course we do because we have differences of opinion. But they're healthy arguments. They're not unhealthy arguments. And we listen to each other or we're more likely to. And there's not this storming out. Nothing gets trashed. I don't throw plates at him. It's just a normal conversation. Somebody might get a little bit emotional, but we sort it out. So getting back to the endocrine system. So you know that's how the system works. That's roughly, and it's involved in everything that goes on in your body. We know that caffeine is not good for it. What we know is that our uh, refined sugar is not going to benefit from it because it shoots your blood sugar up and then you overproduce insulin and it comes down too low. So anything that's refined and processed cane sugar in it, the minute your blood sugar goes up and down like that, your endocrine system, your immune system, and your central nervous system can't work properly. You need nice, stable blood sugar. And one of our students of our natural health and nutrition course that um, students all over the world studying, this one is in the UK, in Wales, actually. And she decided she could get a, she could uh, rent for free for two weeks one of those devices that the diabetics now wear. It's like a little device that literally pricks your skin and you cover it and you keep it on for two weeks and it measures your blood sugar and sends all the messages to your phone. And she said, for years and years and years, she knows that she studied the nutrition course and she knows it's not the case, but she wanted to look at the science herself. So she decided she was going to um, monitor herself to see how, how food affected her. She found potatoes had a positive effect, just nice regular blood sugar between four and eight, no spiking when people tell you don't eat potatoes. But if they were fried, they'd spike. That was interesting. And then, but she said the biggest thing for her was fruit because everybody had always said to her, you can't eat fresh fruit as a amount because she's a fruit lover like I am. Some people eat more fruit, some people eat more vegetables. Listen to your body. God designed our bodies in a certain way. And in each of us, there's our genetic blueprint. And that blueprint will tell you if you're going to save, crave, crave savory things mostly and then you need more fats in your diet or if you're going to crave more sweet things. You might need more of both. Sometimes you go from the potato crisps to the chocolates. And then you said you go to the avocados instead of potato crisps. You need good fats, God-made fats, and you need God-made sugar, which is fresh fruit. So she stuck this in and she monitored her blood sugar, just the fruit sugar, just beautiful, which all the science actually tells you, the real science, not the made-up stuff in magazines and stuff, not the fake news, the real news. The real studies show that people that consume the most fruit have got the least amounts of cancer. People that eat the most fruit have got the least account of di amount of digestive problems. People that eat the most fruit are healthy overall and live longer. Okay. So here we go. We know that fresh fruit is ideal for the hormonal system and the man-made, God-made sugar is good for the hormonal system. Man-made sugar is bad. Caffeine is not good for it. We do know that animal products affect the hormonal system really really negatively for a variety of reasons. Even if you're eating organic chicken, fish, meat, yogurt, whatever it is, it's still got the hormones of the animals that have been killed. Those hormones are in the bloodstream. They get into the animal flesh. So it's still going to affect you. But in normal traditional food, if you take beef in South Africa, it is raised with the cattle having at least 11 different hormones, of which six of those are estrogen-based. That's affecting your endocrine system. We're seeing nine-year-olds breast with breasts and menstruating. That means they're capable of conceiving a child. That's shocking. In the olden days, in ancient times, women only menstruated from about 17, 18 onwards. Now if somebody menstruates at that age, it was like, there's something wrong with you. We better take you to the doctor. But that's when we should menstruate. We're not mentally, emotionally ready when we're 19, 11, 12, 13, or even 14. So, so we are designed to menstruate later, but we menstruate early because we're simply not feeding our bodies properly. And when you menstruate, it should be about two days, just two days of light, gentle bleeding, no pain, no discomfort. I remember standing there and feeling this blood draining out of my body. I could feel it. It was hot. And then when I changed my diet and went totally plant-based, no animal products, none of that, none of it was no longer a curse. It was just simply a pleasure. It was just 
something normal like going to the bathroom. It was no different to that. God did not, I don't believe he cursed women at all. I think that we make choices with our mouths and our minds that curse ourselves, actually. That every single woman that I know of who's gone on a whole food, plant-based diet finds that the entire hormonal system works so much better. I've got a program called the 30-Day Detox. I get pe People do those programs and they meet on Zoom and we meet with them regularly. And uh, I've seen people go on to this completely plant-based. It's gluten-free, it's caffeine-free. It's the most strict of all the programs we've got. And literally within 60 to 90 days, 45, 45 to 90 days, sorry, <coughs> I'm just drinking my water. Within 45 to 90 days, the thyroid glands are functioning normally. There's no more constipation. Menstrual periods are regulated. It's just the most amazing thing to see how incredibly well this body is designed. So I found that if it's a serious hormonal problem, and you know, it might be a bit of caffeine or refined sugar, but for some people that have really serious problems like endometriosis, infertility, sterility even in males, um, serious blood pressure issues, anything to do with reproduction or anything the hormonal or endocrine system does, you go on a totally plant-based, gluten-free, caffeine-free, no animal products whatsoever. It's amazing to see how quickly the body repairs itself. If you go the slower route, I always talk about the 100 days to help, which is a slow route where you're adding good things to your existing diet and you're not just taking things away. It takes an average person between one and eight years if it's a serious hormonal problem that they've had, where somebody's had some serious problems. I look at my brother having come out of the heart attack and all the drugs and medication. It took a good eight years for him to recover from that whole thing. But it was also everything he did in his life before that. So it's very important that it takes for you to understand that if you change your diet, you start exercising, you're not going to get fixed instantly. Some people feel fantastic within two weeks. Fantastic. Others, it's slower and it's gentler and they feel, I'm sleeping better. I have a little bit more energy. Gosh, that menstrual period wasn't seven days. It was five, and there's a little bit less blood there. It's just with some people, it's just slow. Some people just lose weight like this. Others take, you know, a good year to get down to their goal weight. And I hate goal weight. Your goal weight is where God designed you to be, so don't have a weight that you put it. If you focus on getting healthy, your weight goes to where it should go. If you focus on getting your endocrine system working properly and you start eating properly, you'll find your endocrine system will function properly. I'm going to give you a couple of steps to do for you to go home with, for you to start. I know that I've been given basically until eight as far as I know. Um, and then you can tell me if you want a little bit more time and if you need a time for questions, although there's a really big group, so it's not my, I might be able to answer a couple of them. But I can tell you there's a couple of things you can start. One is, as I said, try and get the caffeine out. Animal products, get them out. And if you are eating any animal products, strictly organic. So you're not getting all those another 11 different hormones that cause early breast formation. We have men that have breasts today. Young men at 17 having surgery to remove their breasts. I'm not surprised that we've got this whole movement where people are confused about their gender. Because if you have tons of estrogen coming in every time you eat that burger or that steak, you're putting powerful hormones that make a woman a woman. Men have estrogen levels, but if it's too much, they're going. your body's going to get confused really is going to get confused. We shouldn't have this. It's the way we've, we've actually destroyed the good natural food that God's given us, and we strayed so far from what he originally told us to do in Genesis 129, where he said all the seed-bearing fruit is, is as your meat. And it was only when Noah got on the ark when there was nothing growing, and they'd been storing food for a year, and there probably wasn't much left you know, other than to give the animals. And the animals had been multiplying, so now really all they had to eat was animals. And Noah said, can we eat the animals? And God said, yes, but now you're only going to live to 120. Very few people live to 120. In fact, Loma Linda in Southern California is where big Seventh-day Adventist community is. It's considered to be one of the blue zones where, where the, the, the longest living people in America, the healthiest longest living people, come from the Loma Linda blues. It's considered one of the blue zones. And there's several other areas as well. And they all eat plant-based foods. It's fascinating, but very few of them live to 120. They, they, they like celebrate when they live to 100, 104, 105. I have a personal goal to live to 120 years. 
to have my brain, my bladder, and my bowels all working and energy, and my motivation for it is to actually prove that God was right in the beginning, that he designed this body to function fully until the day we intended to pass on and go and be with him. So if you're all around on my birthday, which is the 13th of February, 2078, I think it is. Yeah, 2078. If anybody's around, you're all invited to my birthday party because I want to prove God right. And I'm God willing, okay? If I'm taken out earlier than that, well, then it's God willing. But I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that I get there. I'm not a fanatic. I listen to my body. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not hungry, I don't eat. And I used to be a terrible overeater all the time. So here's some quick steps for you. Is just to get more of the good plant foods into your diet. And I know that this is a Seventh-day Adventist community, but I know that within the community there are a lot of people who have strayed very far from the original dietary guidelines. And so I want to encourage you to come back to that because that's what God intended us to live. And the message needs to be way more powerful than it is. Man, I'll come and be your spokesperson and get out there and start preaching the gospel of this amazing body. Seventh-day Adventists, I believe God has put them in place for two reasons, to tell the whole world they need the Sabbath and two, to tell the whole world that we're designed for a plant-based diet. This is the message you guys have had for decades and it's kind of got watered down. So I want to encourage you to do what God has called you to do. I think within each denomination around the world, everybody has a strong point, a strong thing that God has shown them. We need to encourage everybody with a thing that God has You guys are really, really, really. Sabbath, resting, complete rest. It's so essential. And being good stewards of the body by feeding it plant-based food. So here, yeah, get back on tree you should be. Every single meal, breakfast, lunch, or supper, take your hand and open it wide like that. And you put it down on a plate. It's usually a side plate. That's the least amount of raw fruit or vegetables you should eat before every single meal, breakfast, lunch, or supper. When you start doing that, it's more alkaline forming. It increases the energy in your body. Suddenly your brain switches on. And it's easy to make healthy choices when your brain's working properly. It's really hard to make those healthy choices when your brain's not working properly because you're just not putting the right things into your mouth. So any raw fruit or vegetables, plate of salad, just carrot sticks with a bit of hummus or a bit of chili pesto or a tomato pesto. There's so many recipes. I've got hundreds and hundreds of recipes that are on our programs. You're welcome to go and have a look at wholeworldwell.com and you can take a look at that. So raw before cooked. One other thing is try and have one meal every single day that consists of fresh fruit, which you can eat with a handful, closed handful of raw nuts or seeds to make sure you're getting a good quality protein. Almonds, pumpkin seeds, and sunflower seeds contain more protein than most other nuts and seeds. But listen to your body because sometimes you need macadamias because you need extra fats, okay? So a closed handful like this, not a big handful like that, not two big handfuls of nuts and seeds, just a closed handful. It's not a lot. Sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, we normally throw the pumpkin seeds away. Take them out of the butternut or the pumpkin first and then dry them in the sun or in a warming drawer and then clean them out. And you've got up nearly 30% protein, which is more than steak, chicken and fish. It's beautiful protein. A handful of raw nuts and seeds with a nice big plate of fresh fruit. One fruit meal every single day, not one piece of fruit, one meal that's entirely fruit. It could be a smoothie, it could be a fruit salad, it could just be a whole plate of mango slices because they're in season right now. And what's not to like about that, okay? So it's raw fruit or vegetables, a side plate before every, at least the size of your hand. So if a child has a small hand, they'll eat that much raw food. If it's a little, little child, like a one-year-old little granddaughter, her hands are about that big when they open and spread. So that would be her raw food before she ate. I'd give her a banana before she had something else. These are easy things to do. And then those snacks in between the meals, when you're feeling like a chocolate, Go and grab a handful of beautiful raisins. We've got these beautiful non-world raisins made from the seedless um, white or green grapes. They are so beautiful. And they've got no preservatives on them either. They are just the most delicious caramelly taste. Handful of that when you're craving a chocolate. Eat some dates if you're craving some sweets. Instead of going and baking muffins, go and grab a pineapple and slice it and eat it and enjoy it. Or if it's a muffin you feel like, a mango can replace it, okay? So make a point of eating fresh fruits or vegetables in between meals if you're going to snack. And if you're doing that, your diet's at least 75 or 80% raw alkaline forming foods. Your energy levels are going to go up. Your brain's going to switch on because you're stabilizing your blood sugar, getting all that fiber in, 
which helps your brain function properly so your blood sugar is stable. All the fiber in comes out and cleans out your colon with all old fecal matter. Most people walk around with one to 10 kilograms of old fecal matter. When they die, that's what they find in your digestive tract because they don't eat enough fruit and vegetables. And so you get all of that out, then you can absorb your nutrients and you start eating less. And when you're eating less, you save a ton of money. So you're going to be healthy and beautiful and rich all if you just do all of that stuff. I'm not, I, I know it sounds like I'm teasing you, but honestly, it's so simple. We've made it complicated and there's no reason to make it complicated. And I'll give you one more step. Drink a glass of water before you eat or drink anything else because very often we're actually just thirsty when we think we're going to eat. That's important for your hormonal system. Hot flushes can be from dehydration. And the other one is to exercise for at least 20 minutes a day. And that's it. Things that upset the hormonal system, I mentioned caffeine, I mentioned gluten. That's another one that can move, affect the thyroid gland. Uh, artificial sweeteners that you have in diet, cold drinks and stuff, get rid of them completely. If you're going to sweeten something, use raw honey, use organic coconut sugar, use stuff the way God made it that's sweet. You can use apple juice to sweeten soup. Sometimes when you make a tomato soup and it's a bit tangy, instead of putting sugar in, make some fresh apple juice or just take some 100% concentrate and sweeten it with that. That's a natural sweetener. Next thing I'm going to say is our time is up and I'm going to encourage you to start slowly. Just start with the raw food before the cooked food. One side plate, as much as you can. It can just be carrots. It can just be tomatoes. It doesn't need to be a salad. I always think that dogs, men, and children don't like salads. They like individual things. So put individual bowls on the table. with a nice dip in the middle. So Supper's not ready yet. I thought you might like something to eat. Breakfast is not ready yet. There's a platter of fruit here. I thought you might like something. And you can make a cashew custard. You take cashew nuts and blend it with mangoes. It makes the most beautiful custard. It's just beautiful. It's better than ultra milk. Better than anything. You can make anything. You can make a healthy ice cream. It's the easiest thing in the world. Okay, And then when you start doing that, go and preach the gospel and the good news of living healthy according to God's way and keeping his day of rest. And I'm going to say amen to that. If you've got any desperate questions, I will answer them if you need me to. Yes, thank you so much, Mary Ann, for that insightful presentation. Um, there are a few questions on the chat. I see there. Um, if there's any other, please raise your hand. We would like to... I'm sure Mary Ann will answer as best as she can. I saw one with the hot flushes. If you can maybe just guide her with regard to her problem with hot flushes. Okay, hot flushes are not that difficult to deal with. The first thing... Oh, okay. All right. My husband just said, you've got a special on one of our programs. If you need to know what it is, it's under half the price of what it normally is. Go to wholeworldwell.com. Sorry, he's just reminded me to tell you that. So hot flushes are easy to deal with if you know what you're dealing with. Basically, when you're going through the, the menopause, your hormones are basically what's happening is you stop menstruating, you stop ovulating, you're not able to produce children, and your body's going through this transition. In a healthy woman, you just go through it. There's nothing. But there's certain things that cause the hot flushes. Number one is dehydration. If you're not drinking enough water, you're going to have hot flushes. So if you feel a hot flush coming, grab a glass of water and drink that. If you feel a hot flush coming, um, you can take off your clothes, but that could be awkward because you're going to only take off so much. But the things that i found that specifically cause it, number one is dairy products. Number two is gluten. And number three, I'd say, I'd say dairy products and any animal products. If you're eating any animal products, you're going to have hot flushes because the hormones from the animals are coming into you. But I was already plant-based, and occasionally I'd go out and maybe have some little bit of feta cheese in the salad. I would eat the feta cheese simply to be polite. I didn't really want it. Maybe I ate it one piece and not this. Within 20 minutes of eating one piece of feta cheese, I would have a hot flush. Within 20 minutes of having gluten, I would have a hot flush. So I found the things that affect me, gluten, and gluten is the protein that's found in wheat and oats and rye and barley grain. So if you take the barley grain and you put it in the soup, it's got gluten in it. But if you sprout the leaf and you drink the barley grass juice or the wheat grass juice, that's got no gluten. If it's sprouted and, um, and extracted, some people just pick it out of the ground with all the little kernels attached to it. They dry it and they grind it up and then they 
sell you a green powder that's just ground up leaves, but it's also got those kernels and it's not gluten free. So strict gluten free, no animal products. And the other thing I would encourage you to do is take a source of essential fatty acids, but not fish oil. Fish oil is very rancid. Fish oil goes rancid within two hours after having uh, the fish dies. And then they extract the oil, not from the fish flesh, but from all the leftovers, the internal organs, um, the skin, the bones, they all get mashed up together. And then they use chemical solvents to extract that. So it becomes highly carcinogenic because it gets heated. And you're not actually getting omega-3s. You're getting the great-grandchild and the great-great-great-grandchild is five derivatives of omega-3s that you need. And you're getting EPA and DHA. So this would be the child, cupidonic acid, steroidonic acid, and you're getting EPA. And now I'm getting a bit technical, but that's what you're getting from fish oil. You need all five. Your body can only make all five from a plant source. So your best source of omega-3 fats, which you need with any hormonal problem, is um, omega-3s from flax oil is your most reliable source. And I take a particular product. It's got the flax oil. It's got a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, all organically grown. It's got a little bit of um, sesame oil to stabilize it so because it's a, an unstable oil. And then it's got a little bit of sunflower oil in it as well. And I take that on a daily basis. But you can start with neat flax, and you can always email me if you need to know specifically. Um, so... You need essential fats, gluten-free, animal product-free, definitely dairy-free. Some people find they take the dairy and it goes away and they eat a little bit of organic chicken every now and again and it's not a problem. But at the end of the day, you've got to find out where that is. And then exercise, very, very, very important to exercise. I know you're getting the hot flush and you think, I'm going to get a hot if I do exercise. But if you don't exercise, at least 16 hormones are not going to be regulated. And you need to act outside in natural light because natural light, and that's the other thing is, when you're outside in natural light, wear your glasses down at the end of your nose, not up here, because the UV rays that come from the sun that we've all been told are so wicked and evil for us, they're not. You need the UV rays. Don't look at it. You can wear a hat. Wear a hat and keep the sunglasses off because the UV rays need to get into your eyes, the pupil of your eye. It triggers a little gland in your brain called the pineal gland, which regulates melatonin, which is what helps you sleep, and serotonin, which is what makes you happy. But those two little neurotransmitters are very involved in your hormonal system as well. So outside exercise for 20 minutes, go for a walk. 10 minutes in one direction, 10 minutes back, okay? All right, I hope that helps you. And I know it will. Uh, and then if you need further help, you can always email me at info at wholeworldwell.com. Um, there's another question. Uh, she says that her daughter is struggling with her menstru menstruation. She's a vegan. Uh, she doesn't take coffee, and it takes six days. Can you suggest something for yeah. her? Okay. So you can be a vegan, and you can be a vegan. Okay. So you can be a vegan who is not eating animal products, but you're eating lots of gluten. So definitely take gluten out because it affects the endocrine system. There are studies that show gluten can cause infertility and sterility and autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis. And these have been published in recognized journals like the um, um, Australian Journal of Epidemiology, the New England Journal of Medicine. So there are many studies that show that gluten can cause um, endocrine or hormonal problems and uh, autoimmune diseases, lupus, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, infertility, sterility. So get the gluten out completely. The other thing is to radically improve, increase the amount of raw food in a diet. Get to that one fruit meal a day, raw food before cooked food. So if you're going to have pasta, don't have wheat pasta, have rice pasta. Um, but eat more unprocessed foods. And then the next thing is she must exercise outside in natural life. So it's get the gluten out, um, get those essential fatty acids. Very important to make sure she's getting enough omega-3s in her diet. So take a source of flax oil in the diet. A dark green leafy vegetable juice would be good. I drink barley grass juice every day. I use a dried one because it's such a mission to make your own barley grass juice. But green juices are good. Um, and then making sure she's exercising and getting natural light. Gluten out, essential fats in. And that's where I would start. If she really gets stuck, the 30-day detox that I have is one of our programs that really helps people with, with severe hormonal issues like menstrual disorders, fertility, thyroid problems, um, some really serious uh, hormonal problems there. All right.
Anyone? Sorry, I was muted there. Um, yes, I would like to encourage our viewers to go to Auntie Mary Ann's website and look at the 10 days to 100 days to health. It's a very good program. So um, I know we don't have time now, but I promise you we ask Mary Ann to come back sometime later in the year. Um, I know she's very busy, but we will ask her to come sometime. But go onto her website. You know, there's so many presentations that you can watch there. YouTube, it's it's amazing. Whatever you are struggling with, she already has um, some advice that she can share with you. Um, before I, I know there's a question about juicing. Mary Ann has books about juicing. She has books about diet. So I'm going to encourage you to go onto her website and you can find all the solutions or to um, whatever you are struggling with. Um, is there anything else that we missed out, maybe, Mary Ann, that you think that we should have addressed? I think for for now, I've addressed all the basics. I mean, there are other things, like I said, artificial sweetness, for example, aspartame, which is in Diet Cokes, can cause some serious problems. Yeah. Fried foods yeah. can cause them because it blocks your body's ability to use the single fat. So, so frying food, for example, we're talking about vegan, and you often will eat things like fried potato chips and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. So I think somebody's unmuted themselves and we're hearing the background noises. They're interesting yeah. to say yeah. at least. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so things like fried and heated fats, um, they block your body's ability to use essential fatty acids, so that's important. Um and and for that I, I would just say let's that's a good place to start. Uh, people can get overwhelmed when there's too much. As I said, the 30-day detox can do it. It's a radical program, but the 100 Days to Health is a lovely, gentle program that will get your endocrine system working properly. The whole family can do that. Um, and then, I know there's a special one where you're getting both programs and then you can do them one after each other for less than less than half. I think it's like a third of the price. It, it expires on the 31st. So just get onto Whole World Well. It's whole as in W H O L E World uh, Well dot com, and then you can check that out. Or as you said earlier on, we'll also get onto our YouTube channel. Just type my name in, and it'll take you to the YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff there as well that you can watch. Yes, thank you. And I see a number of people asked if the presentation was recorded. What we normally do is um, Sister Estelle sends it to her conference on their chat and I will send my hours on the Cape conference. So you will definitely have the presentation as well. I hope you don't mind, Mary Ann, but they want to share it with their friends as well. Pleasure. Share it with the whole wide world. We need to get, that's why it's whole world well. I'm on a mission to get the whole world well because if I can change so much and feel the difference, you can, and if you send this to everybody you know anywhere in the world, let's get people healthy. That's the reality of it. This is the mission we're on is to actually make the world a better place so that people turn their hearts to God and want to love him and serve him. Because people that are sick are angry with God. People that are well are grateful. We want people with grateful hearts to know the God that we serve. So, yeah, go and look at it, share it. Go, man, go on our YouTube channel. There's lots there. Just share it far and wide with as many people as you can anywhere in the world. Please do that. Absolutely.